Hi guys and welcome back to Simply Forex, the channel dedicated to you, the trader. We want you to be successful in the markets. So guys, I'm going to give you some gold every day. I'm going to let you know which currency pairs I'm looking to trade and which direction. And I'm also going to let you know which news that you must be aware of. So let's take a look at the chart and what I'm potentially going to trade today. Good morning traders, how are we? It is Friday, woohoo! We have made it to the end of the week unscathed. Um, it's Friday the 7th of October, just in case you didn't know the date. Um, and as always guys, we're going to look back at yesterday's trades, which was a mixed bag. We're going to look at today's potential trades. We're also going to look at the important news today. Yeah, we've got the NFTs today. Um, before I start, I just want to do a shout out to Trader Nick. Um, yeah, always enjoy guest presenting on your show, mate. Really enjoyed it. Enjoyed all the questions from your viewers. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, to my subscribers, my viewers, guys, uh, I know a few of you come on as well last night. So thank you very much. Thanks for your questions. Um, and also, guys, please remember our Discord channel. You'll find the link in the comments below this video our discord channel is blossoming yeah there are lots of knowledgeable traders in there and they're all sharing some great ideas guys so why not be part of that um anything else to say what else have i got to say oh yeah if you would like to be mentored by myself if that's something of interest to you then please email us at hello simply forex at gmail.com um right i think that is everything um so guys we're going to start with yesterday's trades and just before i start yesterday's trades it's just the markets are volatile yeah we've got you know will the dollar continue its strength or is it about time for a retrace will the indices start coming back down um or is it are we just experiencing a retrace on the indices is there further downside um, obviously, we've got, you know, will the banks of this world keep increasing interest rates? Um, what else do we have? I think that's about it, really. But well, I'm sure there's much more macroeconomic news. Yeah. Not, well, and obviously, inflation, guys. Yeah. Inflation is the big thing at the moment, and all eyes are on CPI data. So, all of these things are making the, the markets quite whip sorry. I'm sure that's a word, whip sorry, but they're whip soaring, guys. Yeah, one minute it's in one direction, the next minute it's in another. So obviously, this volatility does make the markets difficult um, to trade. But all we can do is try and follow what the charts are telling us, guys. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. I haven't had my vodka this morning. Um, so, guys, yeah, no, nothing epitomizes this more than the first trade we're going to look at from yesterday. So, this is U, uh, US dollar against the Canadian dollar, guys. And as you can see, guys, yeah, we were trying to short this. Yeah, so price was in an uptrend. Higher highs, higher lows. Didn't create a higher high. And then it come down and broke this low here. Okay. So for me, we had had a structure change and we had a bearish candle form and we had this wick that rejected our grey zone. Excuse me. So for all these reasons, we were just looking to take price back down to this blue line. Okay, but as you can see, guys, the market had other ideas. Yeah, and we had a very bullish candle form yesterday. So this just goes to show, yeah, the the whip soariness, definitely a word, check it out in the dictionary. Um, the whip soariness of these markets like is up, down, up, down, up. Yeah, there's no follow through with trend at the moment. All right. Which is perfectly demonstrated with US dollar, Canadian dollar. All right. But we were looking to short this pair, guys. But let's see if we could get in on this pair. And um, for me, we couldn't yeah our criteria wasn't quite met all right so if you remember guys the this lower gray zone here the idea was for price to break this gray zone come back up retest it and then come back down okay 
So our first criteria obviously wasn't met. You have eyes, you can see that. Okay, but then price come back up to this grey zone and even tested these last highs here, okay? But for me, guys, this candle is just not strong enough, okay? All right, it's just not strong enough, guys, for me to start entering shorts. And what also makes it less appetizing to trade, if we go to the H4 chart, yeah, we've got we've got this candle, sorry, this one candle, this candle that was pushing up into this gray zone. And if I have a candle like this entering my gray zone, I have to have like an equally strong rejection candle. Yeah, because everything in this, everything about this candle is telling me buyers are in complete control. So if I'm seeing that on the H4, yeah, if we go back to the H1, I have to see a candle that tells me we have enough sellers in the market to start shorting this pair. And after that H4 candle, this, I mean, this little red candle is just not enough to start shorting this market. Okay, it just isn't. So like I say, guys, we're trading on the H1, but you still need to be aware of what the H4 is telling you. Okay, and the H4 was telling us buyers are in control. We're going to need something pretty strong to start shorting this pair. Okay, so... For me, US dollar, Canadian dollar, guys, no trade. And thank God we didn't. Look, I mean, it's just shut up. Okay. Super bullish day. All right. So that was the first trade idea. So no trade for me. Let me know how you traded it, guys. Maybe it was a different story. Um, next trade was this. This was the Canadian dollar against the Japanese yen. Okay. So we were looking to buy this pair. Okay. The reason for trying to buy this pair was this. Price was in an uptrend, okay? And I I believe this last low just about held. But the important thing here is this box of indecision. I know I keep saying it, but they are everywhere. There's lots of boxes of indecisions for all the things that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, raising interest rates, power of the dollar, will the indices come back down, uh, inflation's crazy. So it's just leading to a lot of indecision. But once we got this candle, I really like the idea of buying this pair. Then we had this candle, and then we even had this rejection candle. Okay, so for all of those reasons, I was just trying to take price back up to this psychological level. Okay, um, but as you can see, again, with these Canadian pairs, yeah, we had, we saw bullet bearish candles yeah we saw a bearish candle fall all right so the market had other ideas but again let's take a look to see if we had a trade and our criteria was met so again guys we had the two gray zones that we were looking at all right so um price come into this gray zone but obviously none of these candles tell us buyers are in control we would never enter on these candles ever ever all right so first gray zone was obsolete nothing we it, you know we didn't get a good enough reaction and then price come down to this gray zone guys and we did see this candle okay but again it's not strong enough if we look at the power the force in which this market was coming down okay so if we look at the H4, I'm sure you'll see, yeah, a, a super bearish candle coming down. Yeah, also followed by this one. So with all this selling pressure coming down, similar to the US dollar, Canadian dollar, I need a H1 candle that fills me full of confidence to start buying it. Okay? And again, guys, this just wasn't it. Yeah, we've got a bit of a top wick on this candle. So for me, it just wasn't an entry candle, guys. Okay. Um, yeah, just so again, so I just didn't have a trade on this pair, guys. So US dollar, Canadian dollar, Canadian dollar, Japanese yen. 
the candles I saw just weren't strong enough with all of this selling pressure. Okay. Remember, guys, the market is telling you. Yeah, it's telling you, it's giving you signals all the time. And um, this was telling us that buyers are coming down, buyers, uh, sorry, sellers are coming down, sellers are in control. And this just didn't fill me with enough confidence to start buying. Okay, and then sure enough, prices continued down, guys. Okay, so again, Canadian dollar, Japanese yen just didn't have a trade, nothing strong enough to start buying this pair. Okay, um, the third trade idea from yesterday was this. This was the euro against the Aussie dollar. Okay, and this was an against trend trade because obviously we were trading from these last highs over here. So this was good resistance, guys. Okay, and if I zoom in, yeah, we had this bearish candle form. Okay, so the idea was just to take price lower, potentially down to this last blue line here in this psychological level of 1,500. Okay, um, again, instead, we've got a bit of a candle that just shows us a bit of indecision, really. All right, but let's go down to the H1 chart to see if we had a trade. And, and this we did, guys, okay? So, we had our two grey zones mapped out. And like I say, guys, I don't start looking at the charts till around this time here. Okay? And then by this time here, price, I was looking for price, uh, sorry, I was looking for a bearish candle in this grey zone. And as you can see, we simply don't get it. Instead, we get all this buying pressure up to this grey zone. Okay? But then we get a candle that tells me we can start shorting. <coughs> oh, bless me. Hope I'm not catching a cold. That would be terrible. Um, so, yeah. So, like the, can I, the, the CAD pairs I just showed you, let's look at the H4. All right. So, again, we are seeing a lot of buying pressure. Okay, but then these H4 candles, yeah, are telling you price is slowing down. Yeah, we're seeing wicks. We have less buying pressure into this grey zone here. Okay. Okay, although this is very bullish, it still has quite a distance to go. All right. And then the H1 candle is very bearish. Yeah, this candle does give me the confidence to start taking shorts. Okay. So I entered on this candle. What I normally look for, guys, is a retrace up this candle, and then I can take it lower. All right. But that didn't really quite happen. Okay. So what I actually did, and this is a little strategy you can adopt, guys. So if you have such a bearish H1 candle, let's say you normally trade 100k knots, okay? Let's say you normally trade 100k knots. Okay, I apologize for my 100 there. Okay, let's say you trade 100k knots. You can firstly enter a 50k lot on the close of this candle, okay? This is a little technique you could use, okay? If I could write 50k, I can't. I can barely write this morning. I've got a cold. I can barely write. I apologize. <laughs> Excuse me. Sniffling. Okay. So, yeah, if you normally trade 100k lot, always, you know, then we could trade 50k at the close of this candle. And then we could wait for a little bit of a retrace and then enter the next 50k here. Okay. All right. Okay, so you're basically the second 50k, you're getting in at better value. So you can split your trade into two. And then the second trade is obviously getting in at better value. As it happens, guys, yeah, I, I only traded half my normal trade size. Yeah, like I demonstrated here, this is what I would have done. But as you can see, price didn't retrace. 
So I entered half my normal trade size here with a view to price slightly retracing, but it didn't happen. I put my stop above here. And then basically, guys, I got a little bit less than a risk to reward of one is to one. So I was willing to trade this all the way down to the lows. But then I saw this candle fall. Okay, this candle form. So once I see this, basically once price got back down to this grey zone, yeah, I closed 80% of my trade. Okay, closed 80% of my trade. I remember this is not my normal lot size, it's only half of it. And then when price come back up, my 20% actually got taken out here. Okay, but I still had a profitable trade. It was a smaller profit than usual because it was only half the trade size. All right. But yeah, guys, it's a good little um, strategy to use. When You know when you have those huge candles that react to our grey zones? Yeah, so you can split your trade. Half of it at the close of the candle and then another half once price retraces, if it retraces. All right, guys. And then... And then, guys, once that happened, I closed 80% here. Yeah, I, I then, then got stopped out for my 20%. There was another entry candle, this. Okay. So then I entered this candle on this candle. Okay. I entered on the close. I put my stop above here. And again, guys, our first target will be looking to take price back down to this low here. Okay, I will close 80% here, yeah, and then let 20% to run. So I made a small profit, yeah, small profit on Euro Aussie dollar, but I got back into the trade and I'm in this trade for 100% as we speak. Okay, so yeah, give us two bites of this cherry, guys, all right? So yeah, and just um, you can adopt that technique if we have large entry candles on the H1. Okay, so small profit on Euro, Aussie dollar. And then the final trade that we looked at was Bitcoin. And this was just a no-go, guys. Yeah, so this grey zone, this is the grey zone that is all important for the Bitcoin. I mean, obviously, this lower type, this uh, area of the support here is super important. But now, this zone here has become more and more important as the days go on. So, yeah. I'm only looking to buy this pair if this grey zone is broken, retested, and then we can take it up. But as you can see, guys, I don't even need to show you the H1 chart. Price just hasn't broken this grey zone. Okay, guys. So, yeah, tricky day, guys. I, I, I could feel on the Discord channel some of you were finding it a, 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 yeah, a challenging day yesterday. But, guys, look, we'll have challenging days in the market, especially with all the volatility at the moment. But, yeah, just keep calm. Keep trading your system. Stick to your money management. You will be fine. Okay. All right, guys. So, yeah, that was yesterday's trades. Let's look at today's potential trades now. So, yeah, guys, a bit of a mixed bag yesterday, guys, because of all the volatility at the moment. But if you enjoyed the recap, then come join us. Yes, yeah? subscribe to the channel, smash that notification button, guys, um, and then also smash that like button, guys. Help support the channel. Merci beaucoup. Um, guys, yeah, so thanks for that. Um, also, guys, quick shout out to Trader Nick. I always enjoy being on your channel. Lots of great questions from your viewers. Um, yeah, much appreciate you letting me on. Um, I always have a good time. Okay. Um, also, guys, don't forget our Discord channel. It's in the, there's a link in the comments below this video. So come join that. Lots of great traders on there sharing ideas, guys. Yeah, it's really becoming a, bustling community um and also guys uh yeah if you're interested in being mentored with myself one-to-one -one, then please email us at hello simply forex at gmail.com okay so um the trade ideas for friday the 7th of october okay so we've got three trade ideas but before I show you the trade ideas, I wanted to show you the dollar index because we're looking at US dollar pairs today. All right. So I plotted this gray zone. I, I 
couple a few days ago now, guys. And yeah, I just this is a pivotal level for this for this uh, dollar index. Okay, so as you can see, what was once resistance once it's come back down is proving to be good support and price is shooting off. All right, and we've had this super bullish candle and. This will be reflected in our trade ideas that I will show you shortly. So everything's telling me that price will get back up to this high here. Okay. Yeah, everything with this is telling me that. Okay. You do have to bear in mind, guys, that we've got NFTs today. All right. So NFTs could make it go up or down about 8 million pips. I'm exaggerating, but you understand what I mean. Okay. So, um, yeah, if but everything in this chart is telling me price can continue back up to here. Okay, so bearing that in mind, guys, we got three trade ideas, and the first one is euro against the US dollar, and we're looking to short this pair. Okay, so the reasons for that are as follows: so it's clearly in a downtrend, guys. Higher highs, higher lows. It didn't create a lower low. High, higher highs just about but then it come crashing down guys all right and we definitely have a lower low and now we're potentially seeing a lower high here okay and price has been reacting at this level okay so structurally euro us dollar is in a downtrend okay if we zoom in you will also see a very bearish candle form yesterday all right so this bearish candle and the fact that it's closed below all of these last lows here okay so in a downtrend bearish candle the dollar index is telling us dollar has more strength so the idea is to come from one of our gray zones back down to this blue line or even this blue line here guys okay so nine seven hundred or nine six hundred Okay, again, guys, it depends a lot on what NFP does today. But if we can get in and out of this trade before NFP, then why not? Let's take some profit. So we're looking to short this pair. Let's go down to the H1 chart to see our criteria. Remember, your day chart is why you are trading the pair. Your H1 chart is how you are going to trade this pair. So I've got the two grey zones, guys. All right, so... What I'd like to see is price come up into this grey zone, okay? Then we see a bearish candlestick pattern form. We enter the trade. We can take price back down to this last H1 low. If we get at least a risk, a risk to reward of 1 is to 1, close 80% and then leave 20% to run, okay? If that doesn't happen, guys, then price could retrace all the way back up to these last highs here. Okay, but again, we want to see the same thing. We want to see a bearish reaction. We get into the trade. I would take price back down to this grey zone, close 80% and then leave 20% to run. Okay, guys, but euro against the US dollar, we're looking to short this pair. All right, next trade idea is this. This is pound against the US dollar. So obviously, this is going to be a very... A highly correlated trade with euro US dollar. So just trade the one that gives you the best setup. But it's a similar scenario, guys. Yes, price is clearly in a downtrend. Okay. And then price has come back up to these last lows here, guys, really. Okay. And then to these last lows here. And then price is bouncing off as we speak. Okay. So it's clearly in a downtrend. If we zoom in, yeah, we've also got this bearish candle form as well, okay? It's a bearish candle, and it broke this lower wick here, which I like to see, okay? And obviously, the dollar index supports what we're seeing, okay? So the idea is to short this pair potentially down to this psychological level of 1, 100, or even this, side, uh, this last low here, guys, okay? So, yeah, we're looking to short pound US dollar. But again, we need to get in in and out before the NFPs, guys. All right. Let's go down to the H1 chart now to see how we're going to trade it. And what we're going to see, guys, very similar 
scenario. So very similar price action to Euro US dollar. So we want to see price come up into this grey zone. We get a bearish reaction. We take price back down to this low here, close 80% and then leave 20% to run, guys. Yeah, I always like to trade like that. Secure some profit, let the rest run. Okay, that helped my trading no end back in the day. Okay, so that's going to happen or this could happen. It could come back up into this grey zone, test these last highs here. Again, we want to see a bearish reaction. We enter. We, I would take price firstly back out, uh, back down to this grey zone, close 80% and then leave 20% to run, guys. All right, so pound US dollar. We're also looking to short this pair. Um, the third and final trade idea from yesterday, uh, sorry, for today, is this. This is Euro against the Japanese yen, all right? So price was in an uptrend, okay? Higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. And then price broke down, breaking these lows here, okay? So price is in a downtrend. And for me, it still is in a downtrend. Price has come back up, tested these highs here. All right. And then price has been bouncing off of these highs. Okay, so it's still in a downward structure for me. All right. So structure is in a downtrend. And what I also like, the fact is we have a very bearish candle. And the close of this candle has closed below this last air this last low from weeks ago okay but this candle yesterday's candle here has closed below these lows all right so that just gives me another piece of confluence uh more confidence to take this trade okay so euro yen might be a better option guys before nfps but let's be honest nfps makes all pairs go crazy all right, so Euro Yen shorting. So the day chart is our Y, the H1 chart is our how. And again, it's very similar price action to Euro US dollar and pound US dollar. Yeah, almost identical. But again, guys, we want to see price come up into this gray zone. We want to see a bearish reaction. We get into the trade, take price back down to the last H1 low. This is always my first target close 80% and then leave 20% to run. Okay, if that doesn't happen, guys, then price could come up into this gray zone. All right, test these highs. But again, bearish reaction, we enter the trade. I would take 80, I would close 80% of my trade at this level and then leave 20% to run. Okay, guys, so yeah. Couple of, a couple of criteria that need to be met for us to try uh, trade Euro yet. Okay, guys, so they're the three trade ideas for today. Please obviously be aware of NFPs. Um, but yeah, three trade ideas for today. Let's take a look at the news now, guys. Guys, if you're enjoying this daily morning analysis and want to receive it every single morning, then please subscribe to the channel, smash that notification button, and also smash that like button, guys. All right, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, right, so news for Friday the 7th of October. So China, still on holiday. Will they ever work again? Okay, but uh, that's overnight. If we carry on down, guys... We do have some news coming out of China, yeah, at 2.30 overnight, so lots of manufacturing data. So this could affect the Aussie dollar because they have close trading relations, so be aware of that. If we carry on down, guys, uh, the first piece of news we're really interested in today is this. At 11 a.m., we've got the EU Leaders Summit. So what's said in that summit could have real impact on perhaps some pairs today. So that's starting at 11 a.m., London GMT. If we carry on down, the big news that we're waiting on today is this. So at 1.30, London GMT, we've got NFPs coming out um, of the U.S. And at the same time, we've got the unemployment rate coming out of the U.S., 
And at the same time, coming out of Canada, we've got the employment change as well. Okay, so 130 London GMT is going to be super volatile. Some would say Larry. All right, it's going to be, yeah, it, it doesn't just affect US dollar pairs, it affects all US dollar, uh, sorry, all currency pairs. And imagine you're in a US dollar Canadian dollar trade. Yeah, you've got two three star ratings coming out at the same time. So that's going to really move. And then after that, guys, as you can see, there's no other news that we're interested in today. So, yeah, all about the NFTs today. All right, guys, that's it. Um, if you've enjoyed the vid, then please subscribe, like, and share. I hope you have a great trading day, guys, and a fabulous weekend. And I'll catch up with you on Monday. See you later, guys.